What do you get when you mix a host that knows everything about horse racing and another who knows everything about all the other sports? You get a damn fine podcast. Broadcasting to the world. Broadcasting to the world. This is That's What G Said. Pass the wire edition. The final flight in the Petty Bar Future Champions. Chargers gone and so is Rhea Steel. What an eventful race. And it's going to go to Whiskey Sour. What a race. Horse racing. Hockey. Horse racing. Football. Horse racing. Basketball. I mean, I could do this all day, but, you know. It's a lot of sports. You're listening to That's What G Said, the Pass the Wire edition. And now, your hosts, Gino Bacola and the Pig Six King, Jonathan Stetton. Very excited for our new weekly Pass the Wire edition of That's What G Said, where we're going to have John Stetton from Pass the Wire, the Pick Six King, on and John, I guess it'll be I guess it'll be different each week. We're gonna be talking horse racing though, no matter what. Some weeks it'll be more handicapping focused, some weeks we'll have interviews on like we're going to have this week, but um each week where the show's gonna come out like late Thursday, early Friday, we're gonna have uh, a segment with with the king talking some racing with the uh, on that's what G said. So really looking forward to uh, each and every week with you. So so am I. I think it's gone gone well so far. We've been uh, great a little, response. A little yeah, a little yeah. fortunate with our handicapping as well. That always helps. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to it, and hopefully we can keep that uh, that live horse selections going. So you uh, this week we're going to talk about is uh, an article uh, column that you recently wrote on Pass the Wire, and we have a guest on here with us. So you you wrote about him, and we're going to have him on to to kind of talk uh, and 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 have a conversation back and forth about you know his story. Why don't you set it up a little bit for us and, and let him know who our first guest or who our guest for today is going to be? Well, our, our first guest is uh, you, you know maybe un- unfortunately known. Um, a little bit more infamously than 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 famously, and that's the result of a video that um, circulated throughout the racing world uh, a while back um, involving Jorge Navarro, and it kind of died down and was brought back to life after Navarro was indicted for allegedly um, using illegal substances on his horses. And, you know, the indictment is pretty strong. The evidence is pretty strong. We're not here to judge that case. But uh, it wound up looking really bad for Navarro and Jason Service and a bunch of other people. And it kind of brought the video back to light because the video was a a video in which an owner, um, the guy who owns Monster Racing Stables, who's going to be our guest, Randall Gindy, um, was at Monmouth Park with Navarro. And they were yelling at the, at the at the TV, rooting a horse in and making references to juice and, uh, you know, winning and uh, betting with bookmakers and things like that. And it was a unflattering video for horse racing. And I never knew Mr. Gindy, never knew anything about the video. Yep. Judged, it, judged it very harshly when I first saw it. Judged it even harsher um, when Navarro was indicted. Um, but always knew... Um, not specifically related to this video, but just in life in general, there's always more sides to every story. And when you look into a room, you know, from another room, you see what you see, but you don't see the whole picture until you actually walk into the room. And uh, a, 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 a mutual friend, well, not even a friend, uh, someone that, you know, Mr. Gindy interacted with on social media, and I interact with on social media, um, had a conversation, and they wound up putting me and Mr. Gindy together because... Um, Mr. Gindy never really got a chance to tell his story to anybody that would really listen and would give it a, a platform, so to speak. So I was willing to listen and had no idea how I would feel after I did listen. But um, I did have a conversation with him. I wrote an article about it. I tried to do it in a very um, accurate way and, and, and really in a neutral way. I was just kind of conveying what Mr. Gindy told me, but I was clear about one thing that after speaking with him, what he said made sense. And the research that I did on the article, um, for example, confirming that it was indeed a Marcel Navarro horse that won, and we'll get into all of that. 
Um, and well, the that, one, the first you, you thing know, about that is that if uh, what I mean, if Navarro wouldn't have been standing right there if that was his horse, uh, Jorge, that's he, would, he would have been closer that, to the that, track that, or kind of in the correct. path but, in the area. But the know? logical assumption was, you, you, you know, when I when I found out the story, I was like, you know, this absolutely makes sense. It doesn't make sense the way everybody thinks it happened, and. The guys we're going to talk to him about it. this. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk to him about the story. We'll yeah, absolutely. The and the other thing, the other thing that was, you know, glaring to me was that, you know, people made a lot of assumptions on the video, like they assumed it was a Jorge Navarro horse. Um, they assumed that he really had a bet with a bookmaker because he said it. They just made all these assumptions, and you know, I took my step back and said, you know, if a guy's really betting twenty thousand or making twenty thousand on a bet with a bookmaker. And he really, truly believes that his trainer is juicing horses. I don't care who the guy is. He's not on video screaming it at Mammoth Park um, for everybody to hear and see. He's sitting there quiet with his with his bed in, and, and that's it. So, um, y- you know, I-, I had no choice but to come to the conclusion that Mr. Gindy was telling the truth. Now, does that exonerate him? That's a personal decision for everybody who listens. Is everybody going to believe him? No. I got a lot of feedback on the article. Um, It was much better than I thought. I would say that it was probably 60% positive, 20% neutral, and 20% negative. But the negative, and, and this is important to me, the negative was that closed mind negativity. Like, oh, I just don't believe him. And it doesn't matter what you say to people that have that opinion. They just think they know better. Like, no, nobody would say that if it wasn't true. Wrong. Nobody would say that if it was true. But that's all besides the point. But then the point I'm making is the people that were negative were not really being objective about it. They were just, you know, entrenched in their opinion. And and that was that. So and let's introduce about, Randall. Yeah, that's what's great yeah. about what we're going to do here is that we're just going to give him an opportunity to talk. He's going to answer some questions with us. He'll be able to tell his side of the story. We're going to pick, you know, uh, I'm going to, gonna, you know, ask some of the questions that I, you know, as the customer fan who sort of feels a little wrong because there were probably a lot of races that I bet on that were being cheap. But we just want to hear his side of the story. You know, that's that's the thing. We want to give him the opportunity to talk and then everybody else can kind of listen in and, and see what you feel. But we really appreciate him taking time out of his day to come and speak with us. So uh, why don't we uh, we bring him on into the show? Randall, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. I hope everyone else is during this uh, virus time here. Oh, man. Crazy. Just hanging out in the house. It's a crazy, crazy world right now. It's like a, it's like a really weird movie um, that we're that we're living in. Um, but be, we, before we, you know, get into some of the specifics of the video and stuff like that, let's set a little backstory so people can get to know you a little bit better. Because a lot of people probably just know you, Monster Racing. I think I saw 253 starts, 91 wins, 45 seconds, 35 thirds. They just look at someone who won a ton of races, 36 percent, I think, win uh, win rate. How did you? Get, so a lot of us have, you know, were you into horse racing when you were young? Was it a family thing? Was it more recently? How did you get into racing in general? And then from there, how did you get uh, hooked up with uh, with Jorge Navarro? Okay, so I always, um, I'm 52 today. And I something heard. that I always enjoyed um, since I was a younger guy was to uh, go to the racetrack Um and I always found it to be a puzzle. And I found the game fascinating. And it's a game that I loved. And a game that I followed. And a game that I was really passionate about. So that's really how I started, you know, as, as a younger man. So, um, and you live, you're based on the East Coast? I'm based on the East Coast. I I grew up in Brooklyn. I've lived in the Manhattan for ten years, so I've always been in this area. Um, my my tracks that I usually go to are uh, the New York tracks, you know. And uh, the summertime, I had my family always had a summer home uh, down by the Jersey Shore, and uh, I've been also been a patron of Monmouth Park for many years. And and then. So you're at Monmouth Park, you're around. How do you uh, cross paths with Jorge Navarro? Okay, so in the summertime, uh, I think it was when I first got into racing. I'm not sure if it was 2016. I'm not sure. It may have been 2016. 
So I'm uh, I'm sitting in Mammoth Park, and it was about four years ago. I was in my late forties, and um, I'm I'm playing these pick fives and pick sixes, and I think I get like nosed out of like some like fifty or sixty thousand dollar pick six by like um, Pletcher or Chad Brown, someone that I forgot to use. You know what I'm saying? And I start to say, you know what, this game's tough. You know, maybe I, I'm, I'm in my late 40s and I'm saying, you know, what? I love I'm an animal lover. You know, I have two dogs. I had a I, have a I had an eight year old goldfish at the time. And I said, this would be a good thing to go into now while I'm younger, while I could afford it. I'm still working and not later on when I'm retired or whatever. And let me see how the game works. So a friend of mine, I, I never really bet Mammoth because I didn't really have success in playing Mammoth. I did have success in playing the New York tracks because that's what I always played. So I had more experience who the trainers were, you know, and uh, I had, just a, had a better feel on it, you know. So I was always a disciplined player. You know, I, maybe I only bet three, four races a day, maybe play a late pick four because it's more of the better races. And I enjoy just hanging out at the track the horses, the feeling, the camaraderie, uh, friends are there talking, just the way like people play cards with friends. So after I got like nosed out of that pick, uh, that pick five or, or the pick six, large pick five, pick six, you know, it became frustrating. So I said, you know what? I love the game. Let me try the other side of the game and let me own a couple of horses. So I talked to my friend uh, that I met at the races and I said, you know what? Maybe I should buy a couple of horses or a horse. I says, do you recommend anyone? And honestly, I did not follow Mammoth Park because I stuck to my discipline and played the New York tracks. So he, he, he goes through the program. He goes, look at this guy, uh, Jorge Navarro. Okay. I said, so I look at the form. If the guy is hitting 30-something percent. I said, great. Get me that guy. Great. Sounds great. Okay. So he says to me, I know a guy that knows him. Fantastic. I said, introduce me to Mr. Navarro. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to buy a couple of horses with him. Now, I said, it'll be fun. I'll get to go to the barn. I have young kids. I'll bring them to the barn. I said, this is great. This is this could be a great thing for me. A lot of fun for me and the family. And I said, let's get rolling. So he, there was an individual who knew Navarro. And he set up the meeting between me and George. And I met George. And I said, I'd love to buy some horses. And he says, well... The one thing is I have one of my clients, White Rabbit, that he's just got married. He might be moving out to uh, – he wants to get out of the racing business. And uh, I have some of his horses. And if you want to buy them, you can buy them off him. So at least – so he says they've been in my stable. I know what they are. And we could give you a reasonable price for them. So it could be a perfect match. This guy's getting out. I know what I got. And we'll give you a reasonable price for them. So that's how I got into it. I bought a few. And that's how I started into the racing. I ran my first horse I ran was on actually when American Pharaoh won the Haskell. I was on the undercard. I had three horses in on the undercard. And and how many horses so we, you've you've started 253 did you ever have any other trainers besi- uh, besides mr navarro okay so the only other trainer i used during my uh t- tenure with uh george was um jamie ness i used i owned one horse with jamie ness just to try him out um to expand my um where the, where the horses run because uh George would take the horses. I, I tried to urge him to come to New York so I could see the horses all year round. But he said that, you know, he's going to go to Florida. So I know Jamie Ness was on the East Coast, whether he's in Delaware or 
Laurel or wherever he was training. And I said, I wouldn't mind having horses on the in the Northeast. So that, that's why I, I, I claimed one horse with uh, Jamie Ness, and we still are friendly today. Um, so what was your relationship like after you started training or after you, your horses, you know, were getting trained by uh, uh, Navarro? W- were you guys friendly? Did you, like, you know, have conversations? What were your conversations like about your horses? Like, what was the relationship like? I, I, I developed a really good, at first, the relationship. He was, um, he didn't let people in right away. He was a little bit defensive. But once you get to know the guy. The guy's a big, giant teddy bear, and our relationship as human beings became really close. Me, a guy from Brooklyn, him, a guy from Panama, you know, me, a successful guy in real estate, and we would joke around a lot, and he always used to tell me, we were very similar, and he couldn't believe that, like, a successful guy, I'm a down-to-earth guy, that we could get along and we really are very similar to each other. We both had kids. We both had families. We both cracked jokes to each other. So we had similar personalities. And, you, and, you know, he's a oh. street guy from Panama. I'm in Brooklyn. And he was very similar to, to the way maybe I was brought up. You, okay. you know? Let me ask you a couple of things, man. You said that the first time you ran horses was on the undercard at Monmouth when American Pharaoh won the uh, Haskell, correct? Abs- yes, that's true. I'll so never that, forget that. Thing. Correct me if I'm wrong. First time in the game, out of the box, on a day like that, it's a big day. Were you there? I was there. I brought my family there. Um, because I purchased horses from the, gut, from the gentleman who left racing, um, they were ready to go. They were ready to go. So I uh, I actually had three in that day. Probably exciting. bought like it's five in a package. Exciting day for you, I'm assuming? One of the most exciting days of my life. All right. My heart was pumping. You got to realize also, and maybe you can understand this, I'm a Jed and Nick fan. I haven't seen a victory. I don't know what it feels <laughs> like to win anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I, I, you know, if you're a sports fan, you can relate it to me. And the fact that I had a horse running, I, I felt like I uh, it was like owning a mini team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so I said this could be a replacement from my suffering. The Jets, the Knicks. I flew out in '94 to see the Knicks lose in Houston, and 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 this was filling all the voids for me. Now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. A, a tough question. Um, sure. Was there ever a point in a relationship with you and, and, and Navarro and, and your stable where you heard the rumors and you had to bring it up to him and ask him about it or um, you were suspicious or questioning on, on your own uh, the win percentage or whether, whether, whether the gossip was true? Did, was there ever a moment or several moments like that where you actually confronted him or actually voiced some concern. Okay. So being like a a friend with him, which means like when it was at the track, maybe I would sit down with him for a little while, you know, talk casually, whatever. So there was a time when I did ask him about uh, what happened in Tampa, because that was really, how, where, that was in the news. That's all I knew about him, right? Mm-hmm. After, you know, that's the only trouble I knew he got into. Okay. So I did ask him about that trouble. He says, yeah, him, him and Ness got into trouble. And um, I didn't go more into detail because it seems like they were cleared from it. And then, you see, there's a different perspective. I went from Randall, the horse player, to Randall, the owner, but still remained Randall, the lover of the game, bet three or four races. Maybe on a day I had a horse in, I was so excited I didn't even play the races. So when I he told me that everything was cleared up. And then when you become a horseman and you become an owner, you start reading the news more about racing. And all the time in the news, all I hear is 
This guy is suspended for for a little bit too much of that. And this guy is suspended for a little bit too much of that. So to me, it was it, it, it was all like normal stuff. Maybe you gave a medication a few days too early. Every every Jewish jurisdiction is different. One one jurisdiction allows this on the body for seven days. If you ship it, maybe it's all you have to do it three days before. So I just thought that was part of the game. I'm not a veterinarian. I'm Randall, the horse guy, the player. George, I gave him, I said, you're the expert. I said, you spot the horses where you think they belong. I want to win. I don't care if you drop them, because that's the only way I'm going to stay in the game is collecting purses. And of course, if there's a horse you want to protect that you think might be something, then do your best to protect the horse. And that no. was our strategy. When he entered a horse, he I didn't even he didn't even call me first. I, I got, gave him gotta say block something. No. run the stable. You gotta be able to frame that answer so we can present it as the um best argument I've heard in a long time for just complete drug free racing. I mean, if that I'm sorry, you want, I'm, I, I says that answer is the best argument I've heard for drug free racing, for just no no drugs at all. Because when you have owners that are new, now, you see my point. I, I, listen, let me tell you something. This is between me and you. I used to, I did my best, maybe because I used the sheets and there was less information. But I did worse the second they brought Lasix to Aqueduct, everybody to New York. Well, yeah. Well, my point okay. is that so, you have an yeah. owner who is new to the game saying that he's reading about all these slight overages um, and, you know, legal medications being used too close to a race and stuff like that. And to me, that's just a, a, a really strong argument for just no drugs. Absolutely. It's definitely one of the many, many problems that, um, unfortunately, in the last decade or so have kind of continued to, to keep to keep presenting themselves in this sport. So, so now you, things are starting to go pretty well for you. You know, you, you, you said, you know, you didn't, you had horses kind of right away that were ready to go because you, you bought them off someone who was leaving the game. So it wasn't like there were stout, like um, two year olds that you were waiting for, or horses that you bought real young. You, you were able to get going pretty, pretty quickly. And, quickly. and, and then, you know, in about a year or two, things were going really, really well for you. I think in 2017, there was one, one month where you were, I think, nine out of 14 uh, winners, and it just like every horse was firing well. So as this is going on, like it's got to be a weird position that you're in, right? Because like you're hearing these things from people, you're reading stuff, you know that this guy's got a reputation, but he's a very nice guy to you, and the, and it, it's hard, you know, in in anything because we can only. We can only report on how people are with us and our relationship with someone. And if someone's not wronged you yet, it's hard for you to think he's a bad guy. No, and I, I, I listen. If all the allegations are true, I still don't think he's a bad guy because of the way he treated me like a friend. You know, I don't know his relationship with the other owners, but I never had. I know some of the other owners. And they never brought up to me that he was doing something or wasn't doing something. I've sat down with his other owners, you know. So have you read I, the, I just, um, the 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 recent the um all the indictments and everything that came out a couple weeks ago? I read to my it was a horror to me what I read. Yeah, and I have knots in my stomach from it, and I'm sick over it. And I can't believe he did this because, in my true opinion. This guy, I saw him at the barn, I'm telling you, 14, 15 hours a day. That's one. That's one advantage I saw. Again, I, don't, I didn't really own horses with other people. I don't know how hard they were. Number two, he was one of the only trainers in his league that was always with his horses. He didn't have two stables, one in uh, – he always had all the horses with him. He was on top of, of – of, all his horses. So he didn't leave it to the assistants. Like other trainers have multiple bonds around the country. This guy had one bond. And you, and which is funny because now you, you think you think, and, and, and you're thinking of that as a positive. And now we find out later that a lot of that, I mean, like, these are all allegations that are out there, but a lot of that was probably because the, the less people that you have dealing with your horses, the less people who know the things that are going on and, and, and you don't have to worry about, you know, 
those people talking to others. So it's um, it, it was definitely not a, a good situation that you're in. As, as but you continue to win. But what you you had mentioned and something that John mentioned too in the article is that w- when when you're winning and, and and you're and you're and you're just you're not making a whole ton of money, right? Yeah. So what am I winning? I I win a press for twelve. The 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 horses cost uh, uh whatever it is a hundred a day, and then the vet bill is a thousand to fifteen hundred per horse. So, so if if I win one race in two months, I'm breaking even with the jockey getting ten percent, him getting ten percent. There's shipping costs. There's just so many costs involved. I had I always had a horse that I like with that needed uh like needed um medical care, you know, like horses that had needed tie backs. I always had a horse that I was paying for for treatment to help that animal. I never tell George, I said we have to save the animal. I had horses all the time. I had horses on farms all the time, paying a thousand a month. So you got to realize I have all these expenses yeah. too. How, how many I at one time do you think was the most you had? So, what? How many horses at the at, at one time was like I the most that you had? Twelve, about twelve to thirteen, or in that in that range. That was probably the highest I ever had. Okay. And what? Yeah, that was the highest. Yeah. And, and so, what point when you're you're losing money? But you're winning, which is which is weird, right? Because you're you're probably thinking like, if I'm not making the money and I'm winning races, what the hell is happening to the people who are not winning at all and losing all the time and not even getting any of this this purse back? When when does it kind of like become like enough is enough for you? Okay, so what happened was it became enough is enough because when I had this many horses, I said I I became it came to the point where I was under pressure to win a race to pay the bills, and that became uncomfortable, okay? So I had a talk with George, and I said, I have to lower these horses. So we slowly put them in to, uh, you know, drop them to get claimed, and I said, I'm comfortable, maybe max five horses. I can enjoy the game. There's no pressure. I can lose every race. I don't care. And I, I could afford it. I pick up a few checks. I pay the bills, and it's a hobby. You know, I love the horses, and that's how I could stay in the game. So before the video, I only had I think four horses, four or five horses at the time of the video. And 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 so now let's let's kind of uh, get get into the video now. So from your from your perspective, from your words, tell us. You know, everybody just saw the video and we're screaming juice, man. And yeah, we, we effed you guys again and this and that. And, 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 and we all, we just, that's what we saw. We didn't see what happened before. We didn't see what happened the day before. We don't know. Um, I know myself, I'm fiery. I'm definitely have had alter gotten into it with a person or two in places when we were very, uh, we all have big egos, especially with gambling and we go back and forth, but, but tell us like from your perspective, what happened? Okay. I'll tell you exactly what happened. So I'm sitting at the bar one day, uh, minding my own business. Um, the, the mammoth day was over, and I uh, had another hour to hang out at the track. I said, let me look at the Santa Anita or the other races, you know, before I had to go home, you know, to the family. I'm sitting at the bar, and this gentleman comes up to me, and he says, you're juicing your horses. I said, what? Yeah. You're juicing your horses. I said, what am I doing? He goes, you're going into the barns and sticking a needle in the horses. Now, this is the most asinine thing I've, I've ever heard. I, I'm, I go into the barn and, and, I mean, is he out of his mind? Like, 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 really? And then he says, okay, you don't, you do, your trainer, George Navarro does. And he got me, like, really pissed off. You understand? Because, first of all, he, he's attacking me. And he's attacking Navarro. And, and absolutely, I'm steaming. As, you know, to me, Navarro was on the up and up. You know, I had no idea that this other stuff was going on. I thought he was a great horseman. He still might be. these alleged. But I really think he was outworking everyone else. Okay. So then I, I, I mentioned, hey, you're a fat pig. Because I have to answer something. 
you know, I, I don't mean to fight with people, but that's what I said to him. He takes my iPad, he throws it onto the floor. At that wow. point, uh, they called security. They asked him to leave. It was time for me to leave anyway. I told him what happened. I was like, my heart was racing. I said, this is crazy. And I went home. The next day, I go to the security and I show them uh, my iPod cr uh, was cracked and everything. And I wanted them to just log it. And, and they did that. Okay. So now let's just fast forward. This guy, anytime you see the guy, he's telling me juice and taunting me and all kinds of stuff. So I, I just ignored him after that. So now the day of the video. Uh, the racing was over. The racing was over. And again, I went into the bar at uh, Mammoth to watch a, an hour of the late races. Mammoth was, racing was over. Um, and there was, um, there was Gulfstream on. I'm, I'm assuming uh, Santa Anita was on. So I was just going to hang out there and then, and then leave. So uh, George tells me his brother's horse is running. So um, that he's going to bet him for 200 And I said, I ain't putting a dollar on that horse because this guy can't win for nothing, Marcia. And that was the truth. Every, every time I bet the guy, the guy, the guy, the guy lost. Okay. So now what happens is we're watching the TV. Um, I was perfectly sober. George might have had one drink or two at the bar after his work day. And the horse starts to open it up. I see the guy who keeps knocking me and telling me juice on the right side of me. So I says, you know what? This guy is bad. Who, who takes a video, puts it up? This guy's sick. So I said, I got to get him back. Obviously, the only way I could get him back, and he denies it to this day, this gentleman. So whatever, on top of everything. So I start to get carried away in the race. In wait, wait, one, 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 one thing before, I wanna, one, one thing I wanted to ask before. You, you're mentioning the, the, um, who put the, before about who put the video up. The, the person who recorded you, was it the person that you were having an altercation with or just a different random person? Okay. The person who put the video up, who we were unable to prove who did it, um, it was either that gentleman or one of his group of people. Okay. Like it could have been his friend. could have been someone else. Again, allegedly. You understand? Because I don't. Yeah. Have, I know, but I don't have a hundred percent proof. You understand? Yeah. I don't have a hundred percent proof. Okay. But there's no one else that would have motive to put up the video, right? So it's obvious I didn't have a problem with anyone at the racetrack. You know, I'm, a, I'm a friendly guy. I. I well, I, I think I, the I, only I the only the sort of a problem with that is not. I don't. I don't think people were even putting it up to to hurt you. I think when people saw Navarro in that. And with everybody already thinking this guy's a cheater, there, you know, anyone that saw that was going to share that right away and go, look, this guy's a cheater. You know, and I don't think it really had as much to do with, we don't like, you know, Randall. I think it had to do with, hey, this Navarro guy is the guy that's sitting at 30%, 35% everywhere. Everybody's got these allegations on him. And now he's saying, you know, another juice one. That's a, you know, so th I think that's where, where people probably started sharing that thing around like crazy. Right. So I agree with you. If I was sitting with some 15% trainer, like it wouldn't have made the news. And I got caught up in the Navarro whirlwind, which I didn't even know existed, really. I mean, I go to the track on the weekend, and that was it. I, I, I don't know, like, what's going on. You know, till I started to read more social media and what's going on. And I didn't know there was so much. Con I know there was controversy in the game. But I looked at the controversy like we have in all sports. You know, that's how I really looked at it. So obviously, I got swept in with uh, Navarro. Okay, I, I agree with that. I don't think it was it was targeted against me, but still, by having me in the video, you know, um, I don't need that kind of a reputation when I don't make money. The vets make money. The trainers make money. 
And I'm here innocent, trying to trying to kill a Saturday. You know, and, and you, so you guys it hurt me. When I truly do love horses. I truly do love animals. I truly do love the sport. I so I started to sell myself. What am I even getting? I I, I, I it was almost surreal. Like they were, like I'm getting embarrassed or whatever, or I have to explain myself. Like what did I do? All I did was put money in the game, which supported the backstretch. Which supported like the game itself, you know. And, but and you can you can understand crazy. why people when they like not knowing the story, if somebody just saw that video, you could understand why some of the customers out there, or the betters, or the people who like bet against Navarro horses or something, or people who already had those things in their head, why they would be upset when they saw that. Oh, absolutely! If I saw a video with another trainer and an owner that had maybe a high winning percentage. And they were saying juice or something. I I I I I I I would feel maybe the same way. And and so I, I would be maybe one of those guys that say the owner's crazy, the train is crazy. You're all crazy. You're all this. You're all that. And and now what what makes the situation even more difficult for you trying to. Um, just tell your side of the story is that when we what we've read in the indictments now is that we and I don't think we have names of anyone quite yet, but that we have conversations with Navarro and some of his other owners discussing other horses. Now, I, it, from the gist of it, it sounded like those were kind of horses that were probably running in, in, in bigger races than some of your horses. You had some nice horses, but for the most part, you were more in, like involved in, in the claiming and not in, like a bunch of graded stakes with horses that you bought. Yeah, and spent, uh, yeah. yeah uh, claiming starter races and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, so I did have one nice horse that that did win a stakes race, uh, and uh, that was it. And so, so now I think when people read that and then they see that's why the video has kind of started to resurface. People read that and they hear that, well, Navarro has been talking with some of his owners, telling him how much he's shot up horses 50 times and he's juiced them and he's given every horse that he trains the really good stuff. Um, so that's, you know, when the video kind of started to resurface again the, the last few days. So that's, you know, I'm, I'm sure you could probably understand and you look at that and go, if, if I'm not. Involved and I didn't know anything about it That's really not going to make me look good at all Knowing that he's done that with some of his other owners Absolutely Absolutely But what, so, what he does with you know Maybe the bigger owners I don't want to speculate Because if you see the horse he mentioned You you know who owns that horse Yeah okay? and, and, and these and, are some uh, And again I don't know If they knew I don't know what they knew you know, I read the allegations. You, did you give him the stuff? I don't know what that means. I don't know. You understand? I'm not here for that. But so you, you know, you ended up getting fined like twenty grand for that, right? And 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 he got fined like ten thousand. Yeah. So what happened was, I went to the stewards. Um, I told them the story, same story I told you guys. Now, I deeply apologized. You know, for my actions, I says I I I'm an owner. I have to hold a better decorum. I'm no longer a, a an average horse player. As we know, horse players could yell juice and horse players could yell whatever they want. I didn't realize, I promise you, that, that owning horses was what they'll call a privilege. And it's a different kind of a thing. I was still Randall Gindy. I'm also a Yankee fan. The Yankee fan. You understand? <laughs> so I was still a, just a fan just a passionate guy. Let's win. Let's win. And you know what I'm saying? And if a guy screws up on the Yankees, I'll say he stinks. I was still Randall, the regular guy. So um, I go into the office. I apologize for my actions. They asked me if I ever saw anything. I said, I've never seen anything. I told them the truth. I know George works very hard. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I know. I visit, I visit the barn once in a while. I take the kids there. We feed them mints. We feed them carrots. And that's the end of the day. Um, I uh, the, the fine was originally, I think, max five. They raised it to 20. And I paid it. And they tested all of George's horses. And everyone came out clean. So... What happened was, is because the heat was on him, and 
they canceled his his races, um, his horses in Delaware and different tracks. I couldn't run for a few days. I say, George, why don't you get rid of my four horses? I think it was four or five. Um, you know what? Let, let, let's go on the down low now. It's it's not fun anymore. See see if you could uh, sell them to someone. So he says, no problem. There's the I'll sell them to one of my owners. And I don't blame you for not wanting to take a break from the game. I paid my fine because I knew that's the right thing to do. I didn't appeal it. I didn't do anything. I didn't want to have trouble with them because I always knew deep in my heart because of my love and passion for the sport of racing. And I think it's an amazing sport. I think it's beautiful. I think we need to get more of the kids involved in the country. And that's for another day. And and, uh, I paid it and everything was clean. And then uh, uh, I got back into it uh, about a year or two later. And that was it. Yeah. So you were out for a little while. You got back in. But when you got back in, were you ever, you never were back in with as many, the same type of numbers again. So this, this is now into what we're talking like 2018. Yeah, I, I, I went in with a, two horses, three horses, and I told him max five, like max, max, max. He kept telling me, um, I said, um, let's claim, let's claim, let's claim. And he kept telling me all the claiming horses, they're hard horses. It's not like the old days. They all have a lot of issues. And... Let's be patient. If we, if I see something, I'll give you a call. And that's, and that's why I only had like one or two for a while. And and I pushed them. I said, I need horses. I need horses. I need horses. I says, I need horses for the summer because I, I, I just need, I need, I need some horses. The one you get the mom. I want, yeah, I want to enjoy it. Did he you... was discouraging me from claiming horses. Okay. Did did you ever so there were like all the times you were at the barns or you showed up or you talked to him or you you know you were around him or you heard him with other people were you were there ever any sense at all that there was something shady going down? Never, never, never. In fact, when I used to go there, he with me. You want to know something? We got friendly. He hated talking horses with me. Um, he, we used to talk about the family joking around what's happening. We would go over my horses and then really that was it. And then how's the family? How's this? How's that? Me, our relationship was a little different. Like when he, we hung out, we, we really didn't talk horses because to him talking horses was like work. So if I sat with him at Monmouth, we used to like joke around about other things. We never spoke about horses that much, believe it or not. And I would tell him, how's this one's doing? How's that one doing? He says, I'll tell you how every horse is doing. And then please let me relax. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I understood him because he can't talk about it all day. You know? So, so we dived like that. Um, you know? When, so most recently, how many horses have you had with him up until like, you know, all of this stuff went down? And like, when was the last time you actually ran a horse with him? Okay, so I claimed... Okay, so I had one that I bred myself um, up in New York State. So that, that was the first time I ever did it. So I, I, I bought the mother for like two grand. He was um, a giant surprise. So I gave it to him. Um, I don't think he's any anything. So that cost me a lot of money because you're paying for the, you know how that works with, with breeding, you know, especially cheap horses. Yeah. So he has that one. And then I claimed, I think I claimed four more in January to stockpile uh, so I'd be ready for the summer and enjoy my summer. And that was it. We hit the limit. So he, you, I'm assuming, like you never had any inclination or thoughts. He never told you anything might be coming down, anything weird. Like if if this doesn't happen, you still have horses with him right now and, and don't really know. A lot about what's going on behind closed I have, doors. No, I don't even know. I I don't know what's going on. And, I don't. I really don't know what's going on. Yeah, and and that's what you know. It's 
it's just a it's a, you're it's a, you're into such a tough spot because you know like the comp like the public like you know someone like me I'm a better and it, and I got you know I found that the other day and just like you I'm a, I'm a horse I'm an animal lover I'm I love horses I've been around barns growing up my whole life mom and dad met each other at the track I have three dogs here love animals uh, I know John's a big big animal lover too and when I saw some of the things that were were listed in that indictment that he had. Um, Mr. Navarro had and, and Mr. Service were kind of talking a little bit more because your relationship was with uh, with Navarro. But what they had done to horses that um, ended up dying, um, and and some of the verbiage that was used and kind of cocky. Because I'll admit, even I've had you know I think maybe one or two interactions with with Navarro years back, and this was even before he started rolling. And he was very personal mm-hmm. to me. He, like he bought me a drink. He was always very nice to me. Like I had. Yeah, I, he, he's what? a very. You know, he's he's that kind of a guy, but he's when I read the people, you yeah. know how you can't get the trainers? He's yep. in his jeans. He's a like he's a man of the people. You know um, what I'm saying? He's not and, and, like and these I like, guys in the suits. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't really you know I don't I didn't want to think all the negative stuff, but it kind of you know, you see the numbers and they start going and then when I'm reading this stuff, um about what he had done to some of the horses and about like you like the guy you have a great relationship with him but if this stuff is true that is written about what he did to some of these horses um you know i think 12 they had said had passed away in in you know like the last decade or so within his care he was kind of bragging about um in, in one in one instance and this is all alleged this is all in the indictment this is all stuff that has not been you know Taken to court or completely 100% proven But a lot of these things which make it Difficult to swallow is that They were his own words um, They weren't people, other people saying This stuff, We he's actually In many places like On record saying that he did this Or he did that Like, How, how does that make you feel Knowing I, a, a guy that you, you You know you trusted, you had around your family You loved, like knowing that he was That dishonest with you about that kind of stuff doesn't it really make you question the whole relationship and, and like everything he's ever said to you? Yes, I'm very angry with him. Um, I'm not happy about that. I don't condone any of that. I think that's utterly disgusting that those allegations are true about what he did with the horses. I mean, it's appalling, and I, I don't know what more to say. I'm, I'm, I'm sickened by it, and I'm shocked. I am shocked, and, and and at this point, you know what? I consider him a friend, but if he did these things to animals, you know, I'm not going to be so easy to forgive the man. Have you any thoughts about taking legal action? If you were lied to, if some of these horses were endangered, if this was going on for a long time and you knew nothing about it, and you were just losing money over and over, even if it's not – you know, getting money it's, or financial restitution, game. maybe it's kind of clearing your name. Well, let me tell you something. I lost money because buying horses, and like you said, I I know where my horse is. I have a horse that got injured in the claiming crown. I'm paying a thousand a month now. Is that Delta Blues uh, Man? Is that the one? No, Delta okay. Blues Man's fine on a farm. Okay. What happened was when I left the game, right, and I sold them. Uh, um. When I came back to the game, he was still running. And I said, George, how could you put this guy in the claiming ranks? He's, he's the blues. You can't do this. You know what I'm saying? So what happened was when I got back into the cl- in the game, we claimed him. I said, I have to retire this horse. This, is, this made a lot of my dreams come true, this horse. He won, a, he won a, a grade three stakes, and he got a ticket to the Breeders' Cup and probably was the highlight of my life, you know? And I took the whole family there because he won a win in your in. He won the smile sprint. Um, so I claimed them back with George. We both claimed them. And we both split the bill together. And then we retired him. And um, he's now, I sent to put a picture on Twitter. And he's a happy um, uh, fun horse, play horse, drill let, horse. Let me, let me understand something correctly. When you took Delta Blues Man back to retire him, Jorge put up half the money and went on, went in on him with you, knowing. No, he, he said like this. He said, "We're going to retire him together." He goes, "I don't want you to bear all the expenses." Yes, that was a, a, a mutual thing. So to, this is a good guy. And I said, "How's the blues?" When he claimed we used to call it, refer to him as a blues, he says, "The blues is right next to my office." 
He did love him. This is what's so odd about this. I saw him love his horses. He kissed his horses. This is what's so strange about this whole thing. He, I don't know. I, this is what's so mind-boggling to me. Yeah, and it, it's just it's hard because we we don't always know what's going on behind closed doors. But it's in a situation where like you you understand why anyone who looks at you or who looks at the the name and the stables or who sees your name and sees the video would be frustrated. And you understand, Absolutely. you know, and you if understand. It, yeah, if and, and, I saw it as a better, I, I I I I would not be happy with myself. But I'm here to tell the true story about me and my character. My so wait, horses, one more, one I retired the- for heaven. He's on a farm in Kentucky. I mon- The one thing I monitored was all of my horses. Where they and were that, that's, all I could do. that's yeah. my job. If a horse was hurt, I sent them to the farm. If a horse had ulcers, I said, spend the money. Let's cure them. I gave him carte blanche to spend whatever he wanted to make the horses as happy and as comfortable as they can. I followed all my horses. If they didn't get claimed and they were injured, I retired them. Okay? And you weren't really betting the on them a lot. The where, what? And you, and you, weren't, you said you weren't really betting on, the horses a lot, on your horses a lot. I, I, I never bet on my horses because I had the purse to win. Sure. That's one. So if I lose, I don't need a double hit. Yeah, I lost and I Makes lost sense. money. I don't need it. And plus, when you have a trainer that's three to five, four to five, one to one, six to five, there, there's no value in playing his horses. There's no value in playing his horses. It, 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 it's a losing game. And on top of it, what made me feel that he was on the up and up, so he would have three horses in a race, well, two, let's say. I said, which one you like better? And I used the sheets. So he would say he likes this one, and I would tell him, you're wrong. This one's faster. And the one I told him he was faster ended up winning. So now I'm starting to say, this game isn't as fixed as you think. The trainer doesn't even know who's going to win. I'm telling you, the trainer does not know who's going to win the race. The only thing the trainer knows is if a horse is working well in the morning. So I'm seeing this game, honestly, as less fixed or bad rap of us as I've ever seen. He used to tell me all the time, if my, if my horse was going to win, yeah, they lost. He's told me when my horse was no good, it won. I'm telling you, tra- one education I do have, so pe- I can educate you better, is a trainer does not know when his horse is going to win. I've lost, and I don't bet big. But if he says he likes my horse, maybe I'll bet it. Maybe maybe he's running a, a, a horse for another owner. I'll ask him, what do you think of it? He says, I love him. I bet it, it loses. I probably lost eight out of ten bets, and I stopped. I stopped asking him. I stopped asking him, and I just handicapped him. That's it. And I just actually just handicapped him because he doesn't know himself who's going to win. And so for, for a few more for me And then I know John has a, a couple of questions for you And I really sure. appreciate you You've been asking, answering everything that we asked And you know, we've asked some more well, questions I'm, and you've I'm been an open book. Super honest You know, it's been, it's been um, yeah, I really appreciate that So one more thing too about So my, my question though is you kind of, We kind of got over that If, you know, some of us We kind of expect whether we're betting Or owning or whatever Like you go into gambling and you have to understand that you're probably going to lose Most people do, very few people win Or win a lot It's just not It's not steady, it's not something that's easy It's very, very difficult So now knowing that You were actually like being Deceived the whole time There's no part of you that thinks You know what, Like I, I want to get this out there That I was lying, I, I, I want to at least Like take him to a court or do something Like legal, like legal type action There's not, not been any thought of that in your head I t- no, none at all, because I'm loyal to a fault. And you could see that yeah. people would probably think that that might be, yeah, and, and people would probably think at that, that, like, in, at some point, if you're not wanting to do that, you know, the the rebuttal would be, well, are you hiding something? Is that why? No, I'm just loyal to a fault. The guy stole 400000 to me. I asked him for the money back. He didn't pay me. I didn't sue him. What am I going to do? You know how much the lawyers are going uh, to cost me to sue them? I mean, yeah, if there, was a, if there was a court that I could go to, 
and they could hear my side of the story and his side of the story without me paying a lot of money, uh, of course I would. But the, co- the, the lawyer would cost me more than what I would recover. So I, I, I gave up on lawyers. I mean, I, I, I've had a lot of people steal my money um, in my life, and that's for another day. And I don't think the lawyers help. Have, have you had so any interactions subject. with him over the last couple of weeks since all of this went down? Have you spoke to him since? I spoke to him. Um, he called me because he told me I have to move your horses. And and that was it. And, I, and then he moved and then he, you know, he, he was just a okay. real short conversation. Nothing about I'm sorry short or nothing. He, I, I, I said that I, I told him now you, now you got the video out to get on me and this and that. He, he apologized to me. He said he can't talk on the phone. His lawyer said, I says, I understand. And uh, he called me the next day. I sent him up to Tampa. And uh, that was it. So your horses are where now? They're there now, yeah. And they're with? I'm sorry? And, and who are they with? I, I put them with right now, temporarily, with Jose Delgado. Because I know Jose from Monmouth Park. He's a friend of mine, and that's really the only one I know right now that I could trust. Whether I keep the horses with him or not, I have no idea. But that was a guy he trained at Monmouth, so, and I had a relationship with him. So that was really the only guy I felt comfortable with. And before I let John jump in and, and kind of uh, you know get, finish off and, and ask the last few questions, so what would you have to say to, to betters, you know, someone like me or pe- people like I, I've had more of a conversation with you now, but the people who haven't had a chance to talk to you and hear your side of the story and they just know you as the the juice man video guy, the guy that maybe knew that these horses were getting shoot up, the guy that's part of this you know team that killed a bunch of these horses. Like, what what would you say to those people, the people that are you know probably the the biggest the most negative or that see you and, and, and immediately like, you know, they, they're upset because it's hard to separate what's happened with you and Mr. Navarro. When we see everything that's come out recently about Mr. Navarro and his owners and his other owners. So what's your exact question? So I could, so give a what, what, what would you say to, you know, to, to me or to, you know, the, 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 the fans out there that would be upset and that think they, they don't know, they think they know it all. They think they know the situation. They think they know okay. what happened, that you're lying, that you're full of, that you're full of shit. You know, what, what do you say oh. to the people that think you're full of shit? Okay. I would really tell them the video was taken out of context. Okay. I apologize, you know, if I gave any kind of bad rap to racing. I'm just a regular guy, you know what I'm saying, rooting for my horses as a hobby. Um, In fact, after being with George for that much amount of time, I started to feel, and you could think I'm crazy, by him not knowing his horse is going to win or lose, I started saying to myself, this game could be more legitimate. It may sound crazy. It may sound crazy. I said this game. He's going to tell me if he knows this horse that he shot up with a bunch of stuff. He's going to tell me that that horse is going to win. But just because you let's say he did shoot up a horse, right? That doesn't mean whatever he did allegedly, right? That doesn't mean the horse is going to win. That doesn't mean he knows he's going to win. No one, you know, we don't know. I mean, no, No, but it's it is definitely cheating. It was. It was it was more than than just which, which what we found out now. And again, we don't know if he was doing this with your horses or how many horses. Or that's what's what's difficult about a story like this when it comes out in indictments, and we only know just one piece. Because from reading those indictments, it felt like there are a lot more dominoes that are going to fall in, in the coming weeks of people who are, I'm I'm sure have information from different places and this and that. So that that's what's what's kind of difficult is to like just to separate the, the two and. Um, and it just is, it's not even that the, you know, he gave him a little bit extra. It's that with some of the words, I think the, I shot X, Y, jet up 50 times in the mount, you know, things like that. And that horse, unfortunately ends up and coming and passing away. And we talked about the horses. So I think if there weren't these horses that had had, or if there, there weren't the deaths and there weren't things like that, I don't think it would even be as big of a deal. Do you, I, I know I, and, and that, that's where to me, I, I still have a tough time saying, he didn't do anything wrong, because um, t- to me, as soon as I start reading all this stuff, like, and uh, if once we find out this stuff is true, it's just it's horrifying. No, it is horrifying. I do hope that 
uh, they do clean up the game and get everyone who's done anything illegal out of the game. Um, unfortunately, and I'm going to be honest with you, it happens in baseball. It happens in football. It happens in the Olympics. Look at Lance Armstrong. No one questioned him. Until, uh, and he was running lights out after cancer until they found out years later. So no one knows what goes on, you know, behind the scenes. I didn't hear people saying Lance Armstrong was juicing. I mean, the guy came off cancer and he's running away with the, the Tour de France. I mean, this is the world we live in today. What do you want me to tell you? This is the world we live in. Yeah, and it's you know, unfortunate. If, I think if anyone, yeah, one more and thing. I completely, if I completely wants to go agree. Into horse racing. Let me just tell you something. If anyone wants to go into horse racing and they did legalize these drugs, I still believe, I do believe that the better trainees are going to do better than the worst trainers. Yeah. Allegedly, allegedly, if you gave this with what he gave, whatever he was using to people that don't know horses and wasn't a good trainer, I don't know if they would win much more. It's it, it, it's like a baseball player who can't hit the ball good. It's not going to help him. No, I, I just think the only thing that feels that just feels different about this versus you know what the Astros just did in baseball, right? Um, or which which still stinks. There were a lot of people's livelihoods no, that were, stinks, were impacted. But, by, I but, but it's not. It's just the, to me what just feels just so much more wrong and kind of rings wrong about this is just that these are the horses that are helpless. They don't know what they're doing. They're not choosing to cheat. They're get shot up with these drugs. And and I think kind of what you had mentioned in in proving a different point is that we just don't know when you go um, shoot up a drug. I'm someone who had had cancer myself, and I had was in the hospital. And I remember those first few days. You're like a guinea pig. They're trying all sorts of different things on you because everybody reacts different to everything. And that's kind of how horses are too. He could shoot you. You shoot someone one horse up with something. You give them an injection. One horse will run great. The other horse won't respond to it. And and might not like it. There might be something going on inside. They might have an allergic reaction. You know, there's all those different things. So to me, that's just the part that is so hard to get to get past is that, you know, as someone who loves animals, is just knowing that somebody did this and with their negligence, there were a lot of animals' lives lost. If he endangered any horse's lives, I have no forgiveness for him. None. None whatsoever. Really? And then one more thing. One more thing. Let me just say, there were, I noticed some people commenting on Twitter that uh, good luck with the withdrawal with horses. Any horse I retired, they had no problems. There was no withdrawal. They were fine. One's in Kentucky. One's in Florida. So I, again, some horses. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a vet. I don't know. I just know my experience. I never had an issue with any horses I retired when I was in the game or found them homes. I found, I found multiple homes for horses. And until I found that, if I had to put them on a farm, I, 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 I have another guy I know that's in the horse business. He works for Stronic. He's like an assistant there. And I have him locate homes for me. So I always take care of my animals. My animals are my responsibility. So people are saying my animals, I should know that wrongdoing is. Well, that's not the truth. Now, you know, let me second, Jason me... Blewett is questioning me on the Delta Bluesman. Bang! I gave you the, showed you where he is. Who the hell is he? Uh, Jason does on-track uh, stuff at no, Gulfstream I, Park. Not what he does, is... but oh, yeah, he's no, not no. life. You know, let, let, let him worry about his own life. Yeah, that, he, I think, uh, and it was it was nice that you were able to show, hey, the horse is doing well. Because I think, see that that's where, like for me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lose money. I'm gonna get wronged by some people. They're gonna be cheating, and as betters, we get as the betters, we get screwed always because pe- people no, sometimes well, lose purses. Get screwed, better. right? You know what I mean? Like sometimes people no, lose purses. The horses get. No, wait, wait, like, I, and, I'll and, see you right. Sorry, sorry. No, I just yeah, have no, to say no, yeah, I just, something that I've, I, I've observed in sports and in racing. And again, just I've observed it. How many times have you seen a horse who's supposed to get the lead or supposed to challenge another horse doesn't challenge that other horse? And that other horse goes wire to wire at 20 to 1. I mean, I don't know what the hell is going on in this game. You, you just see it from watching the game. I mean, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
It, it's something it's just, I need to bring up because I'm just bringing up another aspect of the game of how hard it can be. Yeah, and, uh, I, and from, I don't from really know. From the gambler's know. standpoint. From the yeah, gambler's and I, standpoint. And, I think and me being a horse player, you know, it frustrates me. So I get people that are frustrated by my video. Yeah, so. and, and for, honestly, I, I would be... I'm okay with the losses, and they, you know, they're part of the game, right? We're gambling, like whatever happens, we know what the the bets finished, they're done. But for like, I think that's where you know someone like Jason or the people are coming in. They want to make sure that the horses are okay. They want to make sure that all the horses that you've interacted with him, they just want to know that someone who worked with him a lot of the time, that from your side, everything was on the up and up. There are the horses, you know, you didn't have horses that came came out of races with him that couldn't walk, that couldn't move, that had to be Never. put down, things like Never. that. So that that's Never. I think that's where people and I, I'm glad that you and, and whoever responded because people just didn't know. And it's very easy for me or for anyone else to see the video, see what happened, read the indictment, and then just start saying, Hey, where's this horse? Where's this horse? Where's this horse? So I'm glad that you were to keep you were able to kind of straighten that out. And he would call me up. Um Randall, come down. I was in Jersey, five minutes away. He goes, I'm talking to the doctor. One of your horses might have a micro fracture. I think that's it for him. So, you know, so I'm just letting you know. And he says, I think we should retire him. So I said, to George, you're the boss. It's time to retire him. Sent him to a farm. I finally found him a forever home in Kentucky. You understand, which I'm in touch with. Um, I'm in touch with all my horses that I retired. And till today, they took them and I'll always throw them money. Like a thousand here, a thousand. Because not rich people who are taking care of my horses. They're horse lovers. And I'll always give them money. And I have pictures of them, you know. And that's the kind of guy I am. That's why I found it very hurtful with the video. Another guy wouldn't give a crap. You understand? Ah, I'm going to ignore these haters. But that's why I wanted to come clean. I'm not that guy. John, anything else you uh, have to jump in on? Yeah, I, 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 I really, you guys have covered everything and 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 did a good job. I, I just have one question to kind of wrap it up. Um, after everything you've been through, Randall, I mean, and you've got the uh, quote unquote Harvard education in a couple of years into, um, you know, maybe not the best side of of this sport um, from the inside. Uh, now that you've done that and and you've been with a guy like Jorge Navarro um, and you've still got some horses, you're still in the game, you still have your passion for the game. I don't think you want to get out of it tomorrow. Um, Are you going to do anything differently going forward as far as selecting a trainer, monitoring your horses, looking at win percentages and just be more of a um, due diligence doer and and, and hands-on owner as far as making sure things are being done right and nothing is getting past you that shouldn't be like how how are you going to handle that going forward well whoever i give them to um i'm going to make sure they do right by the horses um i'm going to i'm going to try to research anything they have done where they were got uh, like you said too much of one thing or too much of another thing how much they're trying to get that edge and those are the kind of trainers I, 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 I don't want to be with. That's all. Anyone with too many violations. And that would be the only way I would know through violations, I guess, and, 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 and things like that. And I would be careful who I choose as a trainer going forward. Again, I tried to sell my horses. And my family says, you have too much passion for the game. It's your hobby. Don't sell them. And you, and you just said it right. I have passion for the game. I always plan to have a couple of horses. I am soured. I can't even watch the races now. Whatever, you know. But I, I know I'll get over it. And, you know, life goes on. But I have to be more careful of who I choose that's going to train the horses. That's so. all. One last thing to maybe maybe clarify another point. In, in, in the video, and I think you explained it well, but in the video... Um, you made a reference to uh, betting with a bookie and line in my pockets with the, the bookie's money. Um, any truth to that? You ever bet with bookies or do you bet on track? I, or Yeah, so I, I, I never bet with bookies. Um, I bet on uh, Naira. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mostly. 
Um, so that the why I did that was to um, shove it in that guy's face, um, and I exaggerated like "f you." I just made another twenty thousand. You didn't even bet and on that race. I didn't even bet a dollar. Swear to you, not a dollar. And I would never. And I, why did I give John the backstory? Because it's believable. I wouldn't bet a Marcial, and he's gonna hate me, Marcial. Because when I go to Gulfstream, I'll probably see him. That's the only thing I regret in the article. And I'm sorry, Marcial. I love you. You're a good guy. But uh, I always heard you're on vacation, so I would never bet a Marcial Navarro horse ever. And uh, the backstory to that was, is that. George would tell me he's on vacation in Puerto Rico, blah, blah, blah. And they kept betting his horses. I think they looked like five in a row, those guys. I might have bet the first one. They lost four or five in a row. I would never bet one of his horses. And I did not have a bet on that horse. And knowing how horse racing is, even if a horse is ready, um, I would never even bet that much. No, I don't even know if a bookie would take that much on a horse. And I don't use bookies. And... The only way I think I would bet on a horse um, that I really bet on a horse is if, if it was a price. At least there's value. You know, I'm glad, I'm I'm glad you said you. that. You know, I'm glad you said that, Randall, because a lot of the doubters um, that I've interacted with after the article are like, oh, I don't believe it. He definitely bet with the bookie. Nobody would have said that. And. You, you know, I made reference in the article how things are sometimes a little different for people who grew up in New York. Most of us have had experience with bookies and know how they work. Um, be very difficult to find a bookie that would take enough action on a horse that was two to one to win 20,000. Um, you'd have to spread that out over a couple of different bookies. And you'd probably only be able to do that once or twice because they talk, they know. Um, and they'll shut you down <laughs> real, real, so real quick. I, I, had, I had a friend who, who has, uh, he used to play small with the bookie. And I said, how much should I take on a horse? He said 500 to win. And at some tracks, 300 to win. So if I had to bet that with a bookie, I'd probably need about 20 bookies. Right. Or, or if, I mean, so what? So I went to 20 bookies. I mean, I, come on. Right, and then, then then you find out that a couple of them know each other, and before you know it, you shut up, you shut down. You'll get yes, shut down. I, 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 one one of the biggest disappointments, and I'm not going to lie to you because I'm so candid, I thought I'd be able to cash a ticket once in a while. You know, I never cashed a ticket. I mean, I've won, but I've lost much more than I've won with, with George's horses because, you know, and then, and then, I like I said, I just handicapped it. I wouldn't even ask him if he likes his horse. The uh, only thing I did is ask him about my particular horses and if they're okay health wise. That there's no issues. And then I do my own handicapping. And then he would be the first to call you. He would call me if a horse had an issue. That's how he operates. He says if you don't hear from me, it means everything's good. You understand? So yeah. then I know the horse is okay. Randall, I can't that thank you enough good. for coming on. Yeah, you did. I mean, that you, there were a lot of difficult questions. I really appreciate you you answering things, and and you know, I'm sure that were hard for you to answer. And and it's just it's a tough situation. This is someone that you thought was a friend. Um, you you were betrayed. And if this stuff is true that we found out, this is someone who is probably going to be doing some time for uh for you know you know cruelty to animals and all, all sorts of different things. So he just um hopefully. We're able to – what we always want in any situation is truth. So hopefully out of all of this, we can get truth. It can it, it can stir some sort of a positive. So it's just tough because we – so much of the, the situation, we had to say the word alleged a bunch of times because this is all still such a fluid situation. But I really appreciate um, you, you you know answering every question. This was um, this was fun. I, I, you know, I, I'm sure I got – Combative with you a few times, or just probably asked things that weren't fun to to answer. But but that was I, I respect fun. you very much for asking. You know, I really I, for answering. I really do. And I, I just want to say one more comment. There's no place in this world for people who butcher any kind of animal, whether it be a horse, dog. You know, I have two dogs, and I'm and if I I still don't believe it happened. Maybe I'm being naive because I know the guy. But I mean, I, I, I'm speechless. 
Yeah, I think we you, know, you can kind of tell. I, 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 like, I, I, I just went to the vet today. He had a little cough. I mean, I pamper my, my animals. I pamper my horses. You know what it, I'm saying? It's and so, so difficult. This to me, I, I, I have a knot in my stomach when I hear about animal abuse. I donate to the ASPCA every month. You know, you know so, so this is like beyond anything. If any animals were hurt, beyond. Yeah, I, think, I think we could tell listening, and people probably will be too, like, I think you don't want this stuff to be true. You know, really, because this is maybe. someone who, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe, yeah, because so like, yeah, I would, I, one more thing. I, I didn't give a crap again for global warming and all that crap, but as I grow older, you know what? This is hurting our earth. This is hurting our animals. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, that's how I am. I care about all, you know, humans, animals. It, 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 it's terrible what's going on in this world. And maybe after we find things out down the line, um, we'll bring you back. And if we, we, you know, this goes to court or he gets charged or he gets charges dropped or whatever it is, we can, I'm sure at that point, your opinion will probably change a little bit based on more information. Like everybody's opinion changes. We get more information. Our opinion has to change a little bit. So at some point, once we know more, we'd love to bring you back on and maybe we can do a follow-up and see, do you feel differently? Have you learned anything that you didn't know between now and then? And and kind of a follow-up. Absolutely, guys. I'd be, it's my pleasure to go on any time with you guys. Um, I'm around. You could call me. We could schedule it anytime. Anything else from you, John? No, appreciate it. I think uh, I think it was uh, you know I- I- interesting, interesting conversation, and I, you know, I I feel like I understand what happened, and you know, in 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 a lot of ways, my opinion is Randall was another victim of of of, of what was going on. Different kind of victim, different scenario, but an, another victim. And I think there's going to be people out there, like always, that will, some will, will hear this, they'll believe you. Some will think that everything you said was bull. But no matter what, you were able, you were very honest, you were very forthright, you were able to tell your side of the story, you were able to tell everything that happened from your perspective, everything that went on. And I think everybody will at least respect that point of it. And, and there's just going to, there's people that are going to see it. And anytime, like you said, anything to do with the horses that are you know, animal cruelty, they're just going to, you're going to get lumped in with them, unfortunately, for a while. So it, it'll probably just take time. And, and hopefully, when all the facts come out, it will help show that, um, you know, what you told us here was true. Yes. And I, and I hope so. And all I can do is tell the story and tell the truth. And, People will make their own decisions, but really uh, a smart man once told me if something looks bad or you were in the wrong place at the wrong time or you said things you regret and you do apologize, which I do apologize about those statements, that's all I could do. And it's up to the people if they have the forgiveness in their heart that, that, uh, I, that I was involved in the video. I appreciate that. If they don't there's nothing more i could do about it because i've already explained all that i could explain thank you very thank much you. yeah absolutely really appreciate it and uh we'll uh, we'll have this conversation up and posted we're we're recording this like uh it's about four o'clock eastern time on thursday this will be up like late thursday night early friday morning so randall um happy birthday thank you for talking with us thank you for being forthright Hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll get all this information out and we'll find it out because it, it does seem like you're someone who loves the game, who loves the sport. And, um, you know, I, we, all, we all get caught up in stuff sometimes. So um, thank you for being being forthright. Thank you for being honest. And let's hope that everything comes out just some kind of positive from this. I, I hope so. I really do. Thank you, Randall. Thank you very much. So we just had uh, a an interview with uh, from Monster Racing Randall. We heard you heard him talking for a while, and uh, John, you know what? I, I got to say, you know, you you had spoke to him before I did earlier in the week. You had wrote an article for him. I he wasn't what what I appreciated from him was he wasn't combative. He didn't try to talk down. He didn't try to act. He, he didn't in in the same sense of he he. Didn't really say he knew what was going on, but he he was very you know apologetic to anyone who could, would assume that he was involved. And he it seems he seems like he he gets why the public perception 
would be the way it is. I, I, I think he does get it. Um, I think he's a little bit more naive than he yes. realizes about this sport. He got caught uh-huh. up with a buddy. It's you know what I mean. It's like it, it, this happens to us. Like it, it kind of reminds me of just something where it's like you know he loved horse racing. He got caught up with someone, and he was just kind of going along with whatever they were saying. They were succeeding. You're you're having a good ride. It's hard to when you're when you're inside the bubble like that. A lot of times it's just because I don't like I just from talking to him and stuff too. Like I don't get the sense either that he really knew what was going on. I get the sense that maybe he's like you said a little naive or he got caught up and. And I still think that my my major issue is that he still just he was wooed by Navarro. This was a guy that this is a guy that completely wooed him and like sold him on everything. And I've I've it's hard for me because I've had people when I was a little younger do something similar to me where they took me for a lot of money and I'm and I and I'm still owed a lot of money from people out there who pretended to be my friend, acted like they were my buddy, really screwed me over, I set things up for them, I helped them and then they just completely, you know, and so I get I get that situation. I think what the problem that the if if he was the only one that got screwed, nobody would care. It's only because the betters feel like they were a part of it and like we said when the 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 stuff with Navarro and the animals that have been been that have been dead now. You know that that's where this is like a a tricky situation because it's so like we said it's so hard to try and separate everything, but you you have to kind of use the facts. It's a volatile situation, but if you if you've been around the game, there's a couple of things that 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 jump out at you, and or at least should you know, and 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 people that really don't have inside knowledge of the game. I can understand them taking their their position and thinking they know what they're talking about, but in reality, they don't. You can win an awful lot of races in the claiming game and not make any money, okay? Um, between the day rate, the vet bills, the cost of the horse, the cost of the horses you got to lay up, the jockey's fee, the taxes, the pony girl, the pony boy, the, the shavings. I, I mean, just when by the time you get your bill, and I've owned plenty of claiming horses. I know what those bills look like. Um, you're lucky to win a race sometimes just to, to, to hopefully get close to breaking even from month to month. Okay. Um, it's a very, very tough game. And if you're not savvy and you don't have a trainer who's truly looking out for you see i had a trainer who was my friend who was looking out for me peter walder and it was still tough if you've got a guy like jorge navarro who i'm going to assume is a um you know shop operator who's looking out for himself you've got almost zero shot to make any money and when people People say, oh, well, he's a smart guy. He's a business guy. Let me tell you something. This game has turned more million billionaires into bil- millionaires than you can count. OK, and all of those guys didn't become billionaires because they weren't sharp. OK, that's number one. Number two, you look at the sales every year. Who's at the sales? The richest, most influential people in the world. And what happens at the sales? They spend half a million, seven hundred and fifty thousand, a million dollars for horses that wind up running for maiden claiming 50. OK, that's not a coincidence. Happens all the time at the sales. Um, this game has a very tough business side to it that can take anybody because there's another side to this game where, you, you know, you have a passion and a dream and that desire to win. And that clouds prudent judgment often. Um, so, you, you know, if you really understand the game, you understand people and you look at the facts the guy's story is 100% believable. Like even the, the thing about the bookie. Oh, you know, I have people emailing me. Nobody would say that, that they're betting with a bookie if they weren't. The guy says, I won 20000 with the bookie. He almost can't do it. You know, and yeah. he explained why. And, and uh, you, you know, I've been around bookies my entire life. I grew up in Brooklyn. It's no secret. You can't do it. And, and so so like, I think. From a bookie. You tell me how successful you are. Some things that I think I do know. After having talked with him Do I know if everything he said is 100% on the up and up I, We don't, you, you have to believe And, and, and some of us will believe and some, and some won't But I, I getting like I, I, I got the sense from him I feel, you know, that he was kind of screwed more Than he did the screwing after talking to him I, I definitely get that sense And I definitely, um, I, I get the sense that Like you said, naive is a good word Maybe that he was just, you know Kind of just happy to be a part of it all. One hundred percent. That's like he just right. liked being like going into the barn, and so right. he was like he just didn't want to hear the bad. This guy was someone who was nice to him. He 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 you know he wooed him, and it, it just 
it 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 snowballs. It starts to escalate, and you know, it, it's just it's a sticky situation. I'm glad we were able to have a conversation with him. I'm glad you were able to kind of bring this topic to light. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people out there who still say. He's bullshitting this and that There's going to be a, a people that probably that listen and go You know what that guy sounded like pretty honest He sounded like he didn't really know What's going on I don't think he, he he Did I think the only thing that I come Out of this just a little bit Still I guess I don't know frustrated Is that you can just tell that he Really still like respects and likes Navarro and I don't think he thinks he did Some of these things I think he didn't want Want these things to be true and I think He's just kind of hoping they aren't true Because it just feels like someone who it was a guy he looked up to, a guy who took him under Listen, his wing. It's you know, like, it's like it's like a parent with their kid. They never want to believe it. Older it's brother like guy, or something. You know, it's like a guy whose yeah. wife is kid. He catches a cheating on him, and he believes whatever she tells him. Oh, well, it was only one time. I'll never do it again. It's not what you think. I mean, we believe we uh, inst- our instinct is to believe what we want to believe. Sometimes, you know, um, nobody wants to believe they were a victim. They were they were scammed. They were naive. They they missed everything. Nobody wants to believe that. So it's easy to believe if you're in his shoes that, oh, maybe maybe it's not true, you know, because that's yep. how you want it to come out. But this, and this, like I said, this happens at all with with people all the time. Like I deal and especially in racing. Right. Like I deal with someone who you've heard has a, just a terrible reputation and then they're like the greatest person in the world to me. And exactly. I'm and I'm like. How does this make sense? It doesn't add up. And he Navarro, just like I said, from my few interactions, he kind of comes off with like at like that as a guy, like like as that kind of guy. When you're around him and with him, he's the type who will buy you a drink and this and that. And like he makes you really feel like you're a part of it. And when you're not, it's very easy to look at him and say, Oh, this guy's slimy and he's full of shit. And and now we we know he's you know allegedly full of a lot of shit. Right? I don't know, I don't know Navarro, but I have a very close personal friend of mine that goes to Gulfstream all the time that knows him and I have a picture of the two of them on my website. And when he got very friendly with him, he would call me and say, you know, everything they say about Navarro, he goes, none of it's true. He goes, John, he's the sweetest guy in the world. We talk horses, we hang out, we BS. And as soon as he sees me, he invites me for a drink. I invite him for a drink. You know, you'd never know the guy was caught up in any controversy Percy at all. He goes, I'm not saying that he does or doesn't juice his horses. I don't know. He goes, it's not my business. He goes, but he goes to meet him, interact with him, hang out with him at the track. Sweetest guy in the world. So this, yeah, this is, and what's, what's good about this is it's fluid, right? If we find out, you know, in a month that this guy was completely full of shit and everything he said to us was bull, we'll be, we'll bring, we'll either bring him back on or we'll be the first to say it. Um, I just get, I think, for me, when I'm when I'm listening to him, his biggest crimes because it doesn't seem like he was involved with any of the the horses that were really really impacted. He talked about where some of his horses are. I I I, I did read my research too. Like I read articles and I looked up a lot of stuff about him that did say that he was, um, you know, one who did help a lot of horses and pay for aftercare and things like that. Um, I just think for me, the biggest crime that he has is he's just too loyal to a guy who's a scumbag right now. I you know, like that's that. like that's. I agree with that, and 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 I don't know how how less naive he's going to be going forward, which is why I ended asking him. You know, what are you going to do different? Yes, and I think of everything he told us, I think that was his weakest answer because he really he said, "Well, I'm going to try and be careful. I'm going to be more selective." But he, you know, I don't know that he really even knows how to do that. I do like the fact he said he's going to look past look at past violations and use that as a guide because that is a bit of a tell for sure. Um, but I don't know that he really. But like knows. in a situation like this, we this stuff wasn't even getting tested for. Right, exactly. You know, that's right. the problem with this whole situation is that like he, the horses out of Navarro's that were getting tested that were not failing. It's because they're kind of ahead of the curve. Exactly, and and cheaters always will be. We know that. You know, they'll always be ahead of the tests. Always. John, uh, this was this was great, and I think week to week we're going to be doing similar. We'll have some interviews. We'll some weeks. I mean, hopefully, at, like as we were recording this conversation, the news just broke that Aqueduct is now going to be shutting down because I believe someone at Aqueduct uh, tested positive. Actually, it was a, someone at Belmont that tested Belmont. positive. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Thank Aqueduct, you for they, they stopped. They stopped racing there because it's all Naira. All the uh, horses that are going back and forth, and the people that are going back and forth, and everything. Yeah, yeah. And it's scary, and it's. You know, you know, it's inevitable that, you know, people, if this thing spreads is the way they, you know, anticipated spreading, you know, people at different tracks all over the place are going to start testing positive. Wow, so there's one that just came up. Race. One came up right now. Um, the Saints and the NFL Saints head coach, Sean Payton, has just tested positive. This was on a report from Adam Scheffner. And Nick wow. Tamaro, 
who is involved in racing. He makes the morning line over at Sam Houston. He tweeted he was in a winner circle photo last Saturday at Oakland. Wow. So and if that's the case, tested positive. Oh, or and, Sean Payton. Was. Sean Payton has tested positive, wow. and he was in a winter circle photo at Oakland Park last weekend. So if that's the case, yeah, and even Jeremy Balin wasn't he just at a racetrack? You know, he just you know said something too. So that that's where now this is kind of what we we were scared of with with racing being one of the only places staying open is that there's the the people and the horses that are kind of coming back and forth and in and out that's where it's scary about this thing getting passed along uh, and a new motto. Oh, i'm sorry it's okay was, who, who's that is that drago or who's in the back who's that oh, saying hello? That's a little chihuahua oh, okay coco. okay, coco, okay. Be quiet. i'm sorry about hey, that. coco it's okay um you know our new motto for racing the hits just keep on I'm coming. We just can't get a break, you know. I know it just, um, and it was it was almost too good to be true, John. Last weekend, I was so nervous with kind of the world watching horse racing that it, it, I can't help but be a little bit pessimistic the way things have been recently that something bad was going to happen, and and it really didn't. You know, no, no, there were no big horse incidents issues. It seemed like things went pretty well for the most part at, at most tracks, but it's something like this now that it's going to get people saying. Well, why were the racetracks still open when everything else was shutting down? A hundred percent. hundred percent. I just, I just hope we don't, we don't have too much more margin for error for, for negative. So we'll see what continues to happen because it's a massive weekend at fairgrounds. I know Sam Houston has their biggest day of the meet coming up on Saturday night. And, and uh, you know, a lot of the big tracks were still running, but this is kind of the first, like of the big, big tracks really that, that that's had to close down in the first big circuit. So it's, it's all fluid, John, and I, I appreciate it. You came on with me. We've had some really good conversations um, over the last few weeks. I continue to look forward to them, and we're going to be playing it by ear because we don't really know if we'll have races to cover next weekend. Absolutely. Thanks. Th- thanks. Thanks for having me again. And uh, we got a lot of really good conversations coming up in the future too. So it's going to get interesting. That is John Stetton, and thank you for tuning in to the Pass the Wire edition of That's What G Said podcast. You'll get all the information following. Make sure to follow us along on social media. Thanks for listening in, and give us the feedback. Let us know what you thought about that conversation. Do you think the guy's full of shit? Do you believe him? Have you changed your opinion? We'd love to hear why. Let us know why. I thought it was a really fun conversation. We got a lot of information out there. Thanks again, John. You have a nice weekend. You as well. Thank you. You've been listening to That's What G Said, Pass the Wire Edition with Gino Bacola and the Pig Six King, Jonathan Statton. For more horse racing uncensored, visit www.passthewire.com. Find us on Twitter at Pass the Wire and find Gino on Twitter at It's Me Gino B. If it's horse racing or any other sport for that matter, you found your home. Till next time, this is That's What G Said, signing off.